Number 73. Calculate the minimum concentration of ammonia needed in 1.0 liters of a solution to dissolve 3.0 times 10 to the negative third moles of silver bromide. Okay. So, where do we go from here? Well, there's a couple of things that we have to know, right? They're asking for the minimum concentration of ammonia, and ammonia is NH3. Now, we're basically adding NH3 with our silver bromide, right? Silver bromide, going all the way back to basics, we have to make the compound here, right? Silver is AG, bromide, or a bromine. They're both plus a negative one, so this would be AGBR. And just know that if we've been throughout this whole chapter, right, AGBR has a solubility constant. So I went to the back of the textbook to find out what that is. Generally, this is going to be a solid, unless you're, you know, just going to be dissolving if you're under a saturated solution. So the first thing is, is I'm going to write the equation for my solubility product. So I have AGBR. That's a solid. This comes to equilibrium with its two ions, silver and bromine. But Ag plus one, bromine minus one, right? So plus and minus. And since they're charges, they're aqueous. Okay, cool. Now, just know that this is the KSP value that goes with this equation. Okay, beautiful. So maybe I can actually just get rid of this now. But now, where does this ammonia come into play? Well, ammonia will react with the silver and form a complex ion. In this case, you have your silver AGBR, which remember, if it's dissolving, it's going to break down into its ions. And some of them are just going to be, you know, ions, but others silvers, the Ag pluses, are going to hook up with the ammonia. And that's our second equation. Now, how did I know that, you know, this was a two? Well, I just went in the back of the textbook. There was only one complex ion, and it's just Ag NH32 with a plus. Now, this is what's going to form. That's why I brought in a Kf equation. Kf means that you're forming your complex ion. This and the ammonia are coming together to form your complex ion. So let's write that equation. So we have now Ag plus and NH3 on the left side, double arrow, and we're forming that complex ion, which is Ag, NH3, 2, and that's a plus. Just make sure that the equation's balanced. I need to put a 2 in front of here. And now this Kf will come over here. Well, now I have two equations that act independently. However, since they're going on in the same solution, I can add these together to get one whole equation. And remember, components that are on opposite sides that are the same will get canceled out. Keep in mind that this AG is a plus charge, so that's aqueous. This is a plus charge, so that's aqueous. And ammonia, when you're making your complex ions, those are aqueous as well. So I have Ag on both sides. So that doesn't even matter anymore. That goes bye-bye. Bye and bye. Nothing else I can cancel. So I'm just going to bring down what I got. So I have Ag, Br, solid, plus two NH3s. That's aqueous. At equilibrium with Ag, NH3, 2 plus, that's aqueous, as well as the bromine. Okay, there's my new one formula. And if we are bringing two equations together, what happens with the K values? Well, they get multiplied. So my new K value is 5 times 10 to the negative 13th times 1.7 times 10 to the 10 to the, the 7th. So let's see what we get. 5 times 10 to the negative 13th times 1.7 times 10 to the, to the 7th. And I get 8.5 times 10 to the negative 6th. 
Okay. So I'm just going to get rid of this. I'm going to pull this up because now we're going to be working with just this equation. Now, remember, we only had three times 10 to the negative third moles of the silver bromide. That's this. But in this equation, right, we got rid of the AG. So who cares about that? The only ion that's left, if it's dissolving, is the Br minus. So just use your mole ratios. Maybe if I just bring this down a little bit and I say that if I had 3.0, times 10 to the negative third moles of AGBr, and in one AGBr, I only have one bromine, it's a one-to-one -one relationship, that means that the Br minus moles is 3.0 times 10 to the negative third. And that is going to go over here. So I'm going to say 3.0 times 10 to the negative third moles. Okay, now we know that we have to use a K value. So if I just write it out, K equals, remember any K value is concentration of the products divided by the reactants. Only gases and aqueous are allowed. This is a solid. So does anybody care? Nope, so I don't even care. So in this case, it would just be, let's see. We have um, AG, actually I'll do that in a different color, and then we have the one on the bottom. Let's see if I could fit this. So we have AG, NH3, and that's a plus, there's two of them, times the concentration of Br minus, divided by the concentration of NH3, and that's squared because I have a two in front of that coefficient. So this one has to be squared. Now, we wanna find out that concentration of ammonia. So I know that this has to be an X value. But the question is, what is this? Well, keep in mind, remember that this formation constant was so large, right? And we were assuming that all of the AGBR got dissociated into that Br minus. So if the Kf value is so large, that means that you're gonna have a lot of this at equilibrium as well. Use your mole ratios. There was one to one. If you're having three times 10 to the negative third moles of the Br minus, you are having 3.0 times 10 to the negative third moles for the uh, complex ion, because it's a one to one. Now, if we just want to quickly convert these into molarity, remember, molarity equals moles divided by liters. But thank goodness that they told us that we had a one liter solution. So this divided by one is just that in the molarity. So the same thing goes for the other one. And now since we have molarity values, we can just plug it in into our K expression. So the K value is 8.5 times 10 to the negative sixth. This is 3.0 times 10 to the negative third. This is also 3.0 times 10 to the negative third. And if you would like, you can just call this a 2X and use your coefficient. However, since this is the only X value and all the other values you know are numbers, you don't have to say that. You could just jump the gun and say, okay, whatever this is, I'm just solving for X. So this is gonna be X. Okay, so let's go for it. 8.5 times 10 to the negative sixth equals, I'm going to just say that this times this is the same thing as 3.0 times 10 to the negative third I love how I put one as a negative three and one as a negative two. <laughs> but I caught myself, they both should be a negative three. And now it's squared, all divided by X squared. So if you want to just, 
you know, you could cross multiply, do the actual math and solve. What I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you a little trick. If both of these values are squared, you could just do the square root of the whole thing. But whatever you do on one side, you got to do on the other. So the, the both the squares get canceled. And now what are we left with? Well, the X is still on the bottom, so we'll just have to bring that up. This is now just 3.0 times 10 to the negative third. But now let's just do the square root of 8.5 times 10 to the negative sixth. I get 2.91548 times 10 to the negative third. And then I'm just going to bring this over a little bit just so that we have a little bit of room. Cross multiply, 2.91548 times 10 to the negative third, x equals 3.0 times 10 to the negative third. Let's just get rid of that value and then you have x by itself. 2.91548 times 10 to the negative third on both sides. 2.91548 times 10 to the negative third. Okay, this canceled. We're just left with x equals, which I'm just going to put up here. 3 times 10 to the negative third divided by 0 0.00291548 times 10 to the negative third. Oopsie, hold on. Ah. Okay, let me try that again. I was like, what kind of molarity is that? 3 times 10 to the negative third divided by 2.91548 times 10 to the negative third. There we go. Um, two sig figs. So I would say 1.2. 1.2 molarity. And we want that concentration of ammonia. Keep in mind, we said that ammonia in this case was just X. So if the concentration of the NH3, which we just said was X, well, that's what it is, 1.0 molarity, and that's the end of the problem. This one was a crazy one. Coupling reactions. So this one was a little bit challenging, but we got it. What do you think? I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.